All right, party people, what's popping? You are tuned in for another episode of Pop Talk. This is your man, Professor Nims. I'm signing on for Coach Dave. Earth. And Boston Jared. What up? And uh, we don't have the casual one for this segment, but he will be in on the uh, our next segment when we give our pundit picks on the NOA uh, versus Fulton fight. But what we're going to do here is we're going to respond to uh, last week, well, last weekend's um, fights. So we're going to first um, jump into the 135-pound landscape where we had a couple of um, guys who were trying to see if their contenders are pretenders at this point, um, where we had Frank Martin. He um, took on um, Burgos and, uh, well, actually, excuse me, uh, Frank Martin took on Artem Haratunian um, in a very closely um, contested fight. And then we had the upstart, uh, Andy Cruz, who took on uh, Juan Carlos um, Burgos, um, and this was on the the zone. So, and this will help us kind of um, jump into a broader conversation about the lightweight 135 pound weight division, which is at at this time is the hottest weight division in boxing, the most competitive with the most talent. So, let's start off with let's give our dues to Frank Martin who won a very closely contested decision against um, Artem Haratunian. And he won by um, scores of 114 to 113 and 115 to 112 twice. So that, that means that, and remember that he um, he dropped um, Haratunian, in, I believe, in the 11th round. Was it 10th or 11th round? I think Haratunian took a knee in the 12th. Took a knee in the 12th round. Took it in the so, 12th, said he had, said he hurt his eye pretty bad. Frank Frank Martin had popped him with a uh whatever it was, a straight shot. It closed closed his eye. So he decided to take that knee. But um yeah. So with that, and he and to me, I, I give Frank Martin credit because I, I think that he clearly won, I believe the last three rounds. I think yeah, I, go I, I think 10, so too. 10th, 11th, 12th. So with without those wins and without that knockout, without that knockdown, excuse me, um he loses his own. I'm in there. And yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. he was able to dig. Um, he beat, a, you know, a very capable game fighter. But former bronze medalist, which I did not know going into this fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't just you don't just stumble into a, a, a medal in the, Olymp in the Olympic boxing at certain weight classes. It's not like heavyweight and cruiserweight where the right year you can show up and, and 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 leave with a medal those weight classes in the olympics are murderous those lower weight divisions and uh you can't just show up and walk away with one so yeah that yeah, that, yeah. that guy was um that guy was a, a solid solid fighter yeah and you can just ask um Sh Shakur Stevenson about that uh we we saw him and his um kind of ign um, nominous, you know what I'm saying, um, d departure from his uh, Olympics. But do we think that this um, showing by Frank Martin, was it something to give him a bit of praise or is it something to give us a bit of pause when it comes to his performance? And we'll go ahead and let you lead off. Austin. I think, I think praise more so than pause. Um, again, that guy, um, Hartunian was not some pushover. Like I said, you don't just show up and win a, 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 a Olympic medal in boxing at that weight class that he competed in those low one thirties, one twenties, and one forties, shit like that. So now, nah, I think I think that's something to um, where you you give as you did, you give Frank Martin his um, his credit. Um, I think having fights like that early on in a fighter's career and what Frank Martin is what 13 fights in 14 fights in I, um, I he's got to be early it's, he hasn't I don't think he's fought more than 20 times not more than 20 I thought he had let me pull his box track up he's got he something like that the point I'm trying to make is fights like that early on in the fighter's career I think those are character building fights 
for him. Uh, I think that that's that experience is going to help him build um, that 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 experience and that and that confidence. And later in his career, where he he can dig deep and say, "Hey, I, I can come from behind when I'm when I'm down in the fight." So yeah, I, I'm not all you know. All the Frank Martin exposed stuff is uh, is a little bit. Uh, premature a little bit premature for me yeah i see you just posted uh cam 18 and 0 so i yeah yeah not not, not nothing nothing wrong with hitting a little speed bump um as you're, as you're climbing the rankings i I'd, I'd rather see a guy tested earlier in his career than be spoon fed um you know the who's who of c plus and c minus c level guys i think that guy who he fought against was a solid b minus level guys so props props to frank martin for uh for not for not um packing it in and cruising and assuming he was going to get the uh in-house uh decision he wasn't he wasn't he was not on his way to getting an in-house decision if he doesn't loot win those three rounds he's looking at a, a he's looking at a loss or a draw yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and unfortunately, when it comes to boxing, um, which is, you know, different from other some of the other combat sports, uh, th th those L's, are, it's kind of like that scarlet letter. It just kind of like follows you. Right. It's not something that you. Can yeah, make. it shouldn't be that way. Right. It's it just, shouldn't be that is, way. This is, this is the post Floyd Mayweather boxing era that we're that we're living in. And it it, it, it wasn't that way for years and years and years. Uh, prior to Floyd, the existence of Floyd Miller in the sport of boxing, all-time great fighters hit hit stumbling blocks along the way. Guys like uh, a, a guy like Bernard Hopkins uh, uh, comes to mind. Uh, yeah, I, I think he, he lost his first fight. You know, he lost his first pro fight, I believe. Yeah, there were several fights. Uh, Tevin Farmer is another guy who, not an all-time great, but Tevin Farmer is another guy who went on to be a champion, lost fight. Robesi Ramirez, uh, two-time Olympic well, well, gold I medalist. Mean, uh, Tevin, I don't know about that, but I, I think one of the best examples is uh, my man, um, The Flash, Nonito Donaire. I think he lost his first or his second bout and almost – decided to quit boxing, you know, because like... Oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize yeah. that. But well, Frank Martin, let's be clear, Frank Martin didn't lose, right? He, he no, didn't no, he, no, he, no, he, yeah, he exactly. Didn't he he didn't lose. He didn't lose yeah, at all. And he so I, I think part of it is that um, Haratunian is that he uh, is a German-based Ar 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 Armenian fighter, and he... Basically, this was his first fight outside of Germany, really outside of Hamburg. Like, he basically had... He did all of his fights where well, he was 12 and 0 coming into the bout with seven KOs. And he either fought in, in Hamburg, Germany, or um, uh, Munich, Germany. So there wasn't a lot that was really known about him besides some of the very, very diehard, um, you, you know, boxing aficionados. Yeah. And I had never heard of this guy. I, yeah. I had never heard of this guy. No. So, so Dave, uh, Coach Dave, Give us your impression. Was this something that gave you, um, you know, a moment of kind of praise or just a, just a kind of a moment of pause when you think about the uh, ascension of Frank Martin? So I, I, if I had to weigh the two, I would, I would more so, you know, say I give him, you know, the 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 fifty one percent of of praise, like you know what Boston said. But then I give you the, the 49, you know, percent of pause and uh 51 percent of praise because yeah, man, I I I honestly agree with the scoring. I thought the fight was close, man. I think uh and just so you know, you know, I caught the tail end of it, you know what I'm saying? And uh um I I I I I think, you know, those last rounds, you know, I mean caught the tail end of it, you know, of course saw the had to kind of go back and Take a look at the other other piece of it, but mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know kind of which way it was going because of you know when I came in and, and what I did catch. Mm -hmm. But the later parts of what I did see, I thought the guy was you know doing his doing his thing. Going back and then once you look at the whole fight, now what I have not done is I have not looked at a 
a lot of his fights yet. So so take this with a grain of salt, man. And so I'm really, really basing it on because I looking at what I saw in this fight. So I give him praise for winning, man. I give him praise for gutting it out, you know, coming back, all of that stuff. How it fits within that whole 135, and I know as we get ready to talk the, the, the holistic picture of a 135, we'll get into it. The pause for me, bro, is just, man, this cat just, dude, I, I ain't got no problem with with being having muscles. He just, Dude, he just seen, I don't know, man. I, I don't want to call him robotic. Or sluggish, he just, he just, he, the muscles just didn't seem as loose, fluid with punches. Um, I, so I, 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 that I just got a lot of, I got a lot of pause on if he really get to, 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 to somebody within that, that top echelon, man, of one, of 135, man. That's, you know, that's, it's, it, it's interesting you you mentioned that, Dave, because one of the things that Frank Martin has said in the post-fight interview was he said he felt like his reaction time was off. He said he felt like his his timing, I don't know, he said reaction time or timing. He said he felt a little bit off. And my initial impression was Hart, Hartunian was a little bit awkward, a little bit unorthodox. And I felt like that may have done something to disrupt Frank Martin's timing. And you made the observation about his body composition. And I, I, I don't know that that would necessarily affect his, his timing or, or, or reaction necessarily, but it is something that Frank Martin had uh, had brought up at the end of the fight, that his timing wasn't there, his, his reaction wasn't there. And Jim Gray asked him, he said, well, why wasn't it there? And Frank Martin didn't have an answer. He said, I, he said, I honestly I honestly don't know. But he is a muscular guy, though, isn't he? Yeah, he is. So, I mean, I, I did, it was something that when, when Coach said it, I, I, that was something that, that I did think about, like, especially for a 135 pounder, like he is heavily muscled um, at that weight division. Um, and we also, we were kind of saying that for, um, you know, his, his, his trainer, um, you know, who was also the trainer of like Errol Spence and like um, Charlo. The who's who, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, and then coach, what's his name? It's kind of it's skipping me right now. The which one? Um, the trainer for Frank Martin is um, Derek James. Derek James. Yeah. yeah. So we were because um, I was actually with the casual uh, ran, you know, watching this fight. He was down here in his hometown, and we were saying that this was um, basically it. It was kind of show and tell for him because he's got four big fights you know, including that one that are coming up. So he's got the Frank Martin fight. He's got the um, Charlo fight. Uh, he's got the Spence fight. And then he's got the Anthony Joshua fight. So it was like, this is he, like, he, like if he goes four and oh, right here, right. He's going to be, he's going to be, held, a, so he's going to win training of the year again. There's a big eight weeks for Derek James. Yeah. He's going to have everybody knocking big. down the door. Yeah, but at, at the same time, if his fighters do, you know, there was opportunity to go on for it. So he barely kind of skated, you know, he barely kind of skated through, you know, with this fight here. And with that said, I, I would say that this this gave me a moment of pause. And the only reason why is that you got to realize at 135, this is some shark infested waters. Like yep. there are straight kill you know there are straight killers or whatnot like there are at least like five guys who could easily at some point you could see them within the within the top 10 of the of the pound for pound right so if you think about um uh tank davis uh haney um shakur um you know, your boy um Keyshawn and um even um you know, this we'll talk that about Loma, the this Lo Loma, and Loma you know, like, don't forget about Loma. And then with well, the fire oh, that we'll talk about coming up is, yeah, scope a fire that we'll talk about coming up, which is, um, which is, um, Andy Cruz. So these guys, like, you, you cannot afford to really have it an off night. So I'm thinking against any of those fighters that that performance that Frank Martin put in, um, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just not going to do it you know, at that time, but that's why you, 
you you have these um these these kind of coming of age and these you know these fighting where you can kind of work through some of these growing pains um the guy's only i believe he's only 28 years old which which isn't super young but it, it's fairly young but when you think about all those other guys he's probably one of the older guys within that within that weight division right yeah he might be long it's him and loma essentially are the old yeah. other other senior statesmen andy cruz is is a cuban 27 so take that Whatever it's worth, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't look particularly old. He doesn't now. Um, he does. He doesn't look old. He doesn't look old. He's listed in the last few Cubans that we've seen who have been able to get out of there have been Robesi Ramirez, who we know is a yummy, who looks like he's in his early twenties. David Morrell is another guy, also in his early twenties. So the mo of a lot of these Cuban stand-up amateurs now seems to be to get that amass that hardware early. Or just skip the Olympics altogether, like David Morrell did, and uh, and uh, defect, defect where you've got plenty of prime years left, so you don't end up like a Guillermo Rigondeau who spent most of his formative years, his prime years, fighting for gold medals. Uh, uh, yeah, not David well, Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah David well, I, Ortiz. Well, I was say, well, yeah, not 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 David, but um, Lu Luis Ortiz. The, the, Luis Ortiz. The, I'm the, sorry. The baseball yeah, yeah, player. Luis Ortiz. yeah, but yeah, he he was the same one, right? That guy. Um, even though they were probably more of the um higher, you know, I mean the kind of more well known. Um, I think that um when we talked to Uriokis Gamboa, he kind of came right at his physical prime. I think he did he also a two time gold medal winner. Yeah, two time gold yeah. medal winner. But I think with um, uh, Rigandale and with Ortiz, I think that if if we would have got them over here about four or five years earlier, oh, oh they would have been Currens. Well, oh, Rigo would have wow. been ducked. R Rigo, Rigo was put into a box very, very early on. Same with Lara, right? Lara was another guy, yeah. Cuban amateur standout, yeah. who got put into the the pain no mind was that uh, we don't no need to fight no need to fight this guy right uh yeah not not the case with with this guy Andy Cruz you want to switch to Andy Cruz hardship yeah, yeah Andy no Cruz? I was saying this like I think this is I think Frank this, is perfect, Martin. this is a perfect opportunity so we this was the co-feature to the Alicia the bomb bomb guard they're fighting um uh, Christina um Leonardo told um but this is what we're going to focus on the Cuban 2020 Olympic um, gold medalist at lightweight Andy Cruz, who making his professional debut fought a 10 round fight against against you know you got to understand this is against Juan Carlos um, Burgos, who is this is a re renowned veteran who has been in with some of the top fighters you know in and around that that weight division. Um, he won a very um, comfortable. Um, 10 round this decision and um he is he has some notoriety for the american audience because he has um he has beat Keyshawn davis um four times including for the 2020 gold medal so uh with with that said um coach what what do you think about his performance and then do you see him as um somebody who is going to be a player when it comes to this um to the to the lightweight uh weight division well yes um i like to do uh i like his discipline i love how um i saw this guy listening to his corner man mm -hmm. um explosive at times paced himself to turn off the amateur mindset so quick and then to 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 be so methodical you know in his pro debut for 10 rounds to understand the purpose behind the punch selection that he threw man you know um i i i enjoy watching him man i really 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 enjoy it. Uh, really enjoy watching him, man. Um, even though I just kind of praised the punch punch selection, I think, um, I think, and and that kind of kind of goes with the corner too, though. Um, 
because I saw a couple of couple of things in there that where I would have I would have probably had him go ahead on and linger on that inside a little bit a little bit more. Um, but I just I I I loved his his boxing. I loved his boxing, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you can tell he's just a seasoned amateur, man, and absolutely unequivocally, you know. Yes, he's if if he if he stays like he's going, he's going to uh, he's definitely going to 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 give people people caution in that division. That's just my take. Yeah. So and then, really, can I go, go ahead, Kim. Well, I was saying. So I think one of the reasons for the matchup is that um, you know Juan Carlos um, Burgos, his previous opponent. I don't know if y'all remember. Who that was? Yeah, it was, was Keyshawn Davis. It was Keyshawn Davis, right? So this was a kind of a barometer fight to kind of see where, see how he would perform, and kind of see where he, how he would kind of like match up in a sense. Because of course they have their history, and then that's of course the name that he he called out, you know, you know after the victory. But go ahead um, with with your with your comments. Bob. Now I was going to ask Dave. Um, if you what he thought about as far as the punches go, did you did you notice Andy Cruz not turning his punch over to his punches over? That was an observation that I heard a couple people make on, on some different programs uh today. I, it wasn't something that I noticed. I was looking more so at his at his at his movement. Honestly, I didn't get a chance, I didn't notice that he wasn't turning his 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 punches over. Is that something you saw? So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice him not turning his punches over because actually like when I was when I was watching the fight and everybody kept saying hey he, he this guy has never been stopped he's not going to stop this da, da, da. you know everybody was saying that stuff I think he could have stopped that guy really by hitting that body and then sneaking it up to the head even if it was with 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 either hand um when he was on that inside I just saw a lot of open up the middle. So I wasn't really watching, you know, I was just watching his stick and his movement pretty much when he was on the outside. I was watching him press, I was watching him control that, I was watching his old ring generalship and all that stuff. Um, I can't I can't say I if I was looking at him, you know, turning that brick hand over or something like that. I was really watching this other guy looking for those vulnerabilities because out of the mouth of everybody to come, you know, he, well, we knew he, he's not going to stop this guy. This guy's never been stopped, whatever they were saying. And I, and he's I'm telling never, you, he's never, I don't think he's ever been dropped. And he's right. fought, he's right. fought right. Mikey Garcia. Fought Mikey, who was a puncher yeah. at the yeah. Keyshawn yeah. Davis. Um, Devin Haney's not necessarily a, a, a puncher, but you know, no. he's out there. But this, uh, this guy has never, so I, I think that, um, if, he would have really made a statement if he would have, you know, been able to um, at least, you know, drop this guy. And, you know, I, 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 I think that if he would have had a little bit more time, I think. I think so too. I think so head. too, Cam. It was a lot of headshots. So I, so that's why I'm yeah. saying at the same time, I said, I like his punch selection. Cause you know, you had a crafty guy. I, jazz, I thought I, the movement, that's why I still turn right around and say, I, 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 I still I still think that that punch selection could have could have been a little bit more better and, yeah, yeah. and I know that tough but I'm Definitely telling you body. that body he could have went to that body some more and that cat man that cat don't throw, throw, throw you tight in that guard man it was, it was just I, he threw the uppercut once you called for it Dave at one point in the fight and we I saw him throw it one time it was a catch and shoot uppercut there was an exchange at in the pocket. He Burgos had Andy Cruz on his back foot, or Andy Cruz put himself on his back foot, and Burgos went down for two big body shots, and then you saw Cruz rip that. I believe it was a left uppercut. I think Cruz switches switches stances so seamlessly. I believe it was a left uppercut, and I, I, I'm with you, Dave. I think he could have if he had thrown that uppercut more. Um, yeah, and if he had a little bit more time. What yeah? What do y'all make of the select? What do y'all make of of Bozy Ennis? The selection of Bozy Ennis as his uh, as his trainer. What did y'all? What do y'all? What did y'all think of that? So I don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was gonna say that I think that with um, if you kind of look at their 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 styles, how they're kind of 
ambidextrous um, in there. And, um, you know, we've had, a, I don't think we've been, we've had some critique. I don't think we've been critical. We've had some critique. But Boots Ennis is somebody who is, who looks to take his opponent out. And for the most part, he has a, um, a fan, fr a, a fan friendly style. Um, so I, I think based on the the kind of style um, alignment, you know, and how that kind of works, I, I think that um, I think that it, I think that it could work. You know, sometimes we um, we give trainers a lot of credit because they're just working with a super super talented, you know, fighter who can just kind of um, do things. But um, boot style seems to be one that is that is kind of homegrown that him and his father really kind of have kind built of, from the get, ground yeah, up have, yeah. have kind of built from the ground up so i i think that um and, and and it's a very you know well at times it can be a very defensively responsible style even though boots uh can get touched at, at times but i um you know at this point i um i think i think that it'll work and plus you you know you're gonna get some really really good sparring with somebody who is two to three weight classes above you, uh, yeah, yeah, who is, who is super super skilled. It's an unusual. I bring it up because it's a, it's an unusual selection. Usually the Cubans, the Cubans almost exclusively end up with Ishmael Salas, um, the Cuban trainer out of Texas. You see Ronnie Shields, who winds up with Cubans. Ronnie Shields, who famously trained. Uh, I believe Rigo for a short time, uh, Edislandi Lara for a time, and also trains um, Osvati um, David Morrell. Um, the other guy who you see working with the Cubans is um, is it Pedro Pedro Diaz out of out of South Florida? Guy, yeah. I, I believe I believe his name is Pedro Diaz. But usually these guys come with 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 minimal language skills, right? And I'm not sure how good Ronnie Shields Spanish is, but Ishmael Salas and Pedro Diaz, obviously both Cubans, familiar with the Cuban program, also familiar with, uh, with the professional program, are able to take that style and mesh it seamlessly or transition it uh, seamlessly into the professional style. So I was interested, I was very, very curious to see you know, Bozy Ennis being chosen for Andy Cruz's uh, trainer. I do think there is some sort of relationship between uh, maybe it's professional or more. I don't know. I believe the cut woman um, has some sort of relationship with Andy Cruz. I don't know if she is Cuban herself, but they mentioned that she does a lot of the translation work in the corner, if not all the translation work in the corner and claudia trejo who is doing the commentating is a spanish speaker herself so i believe she, she was overhearing some of the dialogue that the the instruction that bozy ennis was given to um andy cruz and she was hearing that being reinterpreted or relayed through the cut woman who was functioning as a trainer also so i'm not sure if that relationship is what facilitated it or if it was strictly a professional uh, decision, like you pointed out, Cam, they saw stylistic similarities. Thought it was a good fit. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Hey, let me let me let me pop up here and say too, man. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is where we still just got to have a pause. I think this is just where we got to 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 really get this guy time to 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 mature and see what's going to happen. I personally like. Uh, uh, boozy in this with this guy, and I hope he and I hope he stays because you know, I never want to be a one dimensional man in anything that I do. So, I think if 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 boozy in this can take that whole Cuban style, bro, just that whole that whole you know, looking at tactic, looking at precision, and and, and the movement that that these these Cubans do. If he can, if he can have him sit down and put power shots in it the way that Boots Ennis has them power shots, and remember how Boots Ennis that that Joker just you would thought he was gonna run out of gas or something, but it was nonstop. Man, look at the threat that you got. Now, that, now, 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 Jared, as we was talking, because you're right, 
it was those times on the uppercuts when this guy was pressing, when he was on the ropes, and this cat just leaned back or whatever, and he twisted some. I think the guy maybe threw three uppercuts. I, could, I was trying to count the uppercuts. Man. But it the one he caught him with hurt him. Right. But now imagine, now put 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 a developed skill boots that's moving like this cat was moving. And when it's time to shoot them power shots like that, you're gonna have some, you got Hades on your hands. So that's why, that's why I'm like, nah, let's just let, let, let let's just let's pause and see what develops. But I like him with Boozy Ennis because you take that tactical, precise movement boxing style that's that's known as the quote Cuban style, you know what I'm saying? And people might take different words to 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 describe it, but I, I look at it just as precision. Precision movement, tactical type of boxing, mixed in with that power man that 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 I know you know, Boots Dad can put in him. Mm-hmm. Bro, you might have what's, someone. What's 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 next for him? What would you do at them? They're they're, they're obviously trying to fast track him. Oh, right? okay. so he... if you're asking me, if you're asking me, then anything below that echelon, anything right below, you know, Haney, Lomachenko, Tank. Uh, uh, even pit bull, you know, and Shakur, anything, anything below that. I, I don't care if it's Cambosa, Z- Z- Zapata, I, I, uh, Hughes, I, I, anything, anything below that. If you're trying to fast track them, mm. go, go, go get them. And then, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that's what I would say. Anything below that, anything below that, that top echelon, let's, let's, let's go get it. Cause you done set the precedent by going 10 rounds. He went to and think I was really impressed with his com- composure because I was just you know I'm thinking that ten rounds three minutes around that at you know at some point but he, he wasn't even sweating he seemed, he seemed comfortable he just seemed so comfortable like he was born to do this so I I don't, I don't think that um the the stage are um you know this is not somebody that you're gonna take out to deep waters and drown. Um, what wh- what would you say, Boston? What wh- what was your thoughts on his next move, man? So I'm 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 looking politically, right? You got to look. Unfortunately, because of the politics of the sport, yeah. you got to look and see politically slash business wise what's feasible. And the name that coached throughout there that might be the next move for this guy might be a George Cambosos. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure given Cambosos, I know he had a falling out with a lot of his, his management, his trainer, and a lot of that. So I'm not sure what his network affiliations are right now. Well, and, and then, you know, Cruz is with Matchroom. Well, I, I guess Which I Cruz? know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Andy, Cruz. Andy Cruz. Andy Cruz is with Andy yeah, Cruz is with Matchroom. Matchroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Cruz is with Matchroom, uh, which is going to take a lot of these guys um, – off the playing field. Floyd Schofield is there. Now, Floyd Schofield is ranked number six in the WBA. And I do not see Floyd Schofield ranked anywhere else. Maybe I'm just missing it. I don't think Floyd Schofield and his pops will, are, are want any part of that right now. Um, that would be looking backwards. For them uh but that's really his, as far as names go that's really his only option that i can see uh, that i can think of there's angel fierro who's the number four ranked guy in the wbo i don't know what his promotional affiliations are there's dennis branchick who i believe is also a matchroom fighter and the rest of these guys are all top rank or PBC guys. You've got your, you, you know, you get your Frank Martin, your Isaac Cruz, who are on or on PBC, Edwin De Los Santos, who I believe fought last weekend, if I'm not mistaken, is also a PBC guy. You've got Jermaine Ortiz, who is a, P, a, a top rank guy. You've got um, Keyshawn Davis, Shakur Stevenson. Those guys are all top rank guys. So, um, and then you've got. Devin Haney, who was out of the question, right, because he's the undisputed champ. Tank Davis, obviously also out of the question, given he just got released from prison, also on also on PBC. So 
it, it, it might be Cambosos, although that's going to be a tough sell if I'm George Cambosos, uh, having just fought, uh, defended my undisputed title less than a year ago to fight this Cuban with one fight to his name. I, I don't, they're, they're going to have to do some, Eddie Hearn's going to have to do some moving and shaking and some serious negotiation to convince anyone in the top 10 Maybe even many, maybe even anybody in the top fifteen to to fight this guy. They they, they might have to just be happy with um, whatever they can get at this point. Probably probably for the next probably for the next year. Uh, it just I, I just don't give the politics and the landscape being what it is. Uh, I just don't see him getting any of these top fifteen guys in the ring. Not not this year. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, going maybe just outside of that, you know, kind of um, top 20, um, it'll just be it, it won't be a name that will necessarily kind of, you know, um, probably a step down from Burgos, if anything, if anything, it'll I think will be a step down from Burgos, which is unfortunate. Yeah, but, but there's uh, you know, there's the American Mark um, Castro, who's with um, who's with Matchroom. Who might be um, somebody, in, or and maybe well, he he's PBC, but uh, Javier for, for, Fortuna, who's sitting at um, who's sitting at nineteen, who's always kind of a rough and tough customer, but he always he he seems to act as a pretty good gauge to kind of see where fighters at, somebody that's going to um, that's that's going to headbutt you, that's going to um, do a couple of uh, illegal things within the ring. That'd be a spicy fight because there's no there's no language barrier there. Yeah. <laughs> And Fortuna talks slick, and you know Cubans Cubans talk slick. Also, that'll be an interesting little build up to that fight, totally without consequence, right? Is a, a fight that that's of zero consequence. But as you pointed out, Fortuna, similar to Bulgos, is a guy who has been in the ring with a lot of different guys. Well, um, yeah, and, and like let's be Fortuna honest. though has been stopped before. Yeah, he's, he's been, been stopped, but we we gave before like. Yeah, and we 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 gave um, Garcia, um, you know, a lot of diff, uh, a lot of credit um, for for knocking out for for Tuna, right? And like, we did, we did, even though that fight was at 140 or some catch weight, I believe, or 140 yeah. pounds. And, where and we were so, I, I think just just to kind of get him acclimated to how kind of rough and tough um, the um, the kind of pro ranks will be. And it, it's a name that at least people will will recognize, but I think for him that might be a good step. So uh, now I think what just real quick, I think the more interesting question, the more intriguing question is what's next for Frank Martin, because Frank Martin is going to have a lot more options than Andy Cruz has, because Frank Martin, you've got uh, you know you've got Isaac Cruz. I believe is Zapata a, a PBC fighter? Williams Williams Zapata? I can't I can't remember. But you've got no, he, Edwin, he, 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 he's Golden Boy William Zapata. He's, he's Golden Boy. Okay, so then th that that might also be another name that uh, might be an option for Andy Cruz. Well, yeah, but, and, uh, like Martin is he should be. I mean, at this point, he's got to be look. He's ranked six. You know, um, in the the kind of um, this is kind of ring magazine, but he's got to be looking forward, right? He's got to he, he fights anybody, and he, he's he's already beat um, um, Ali R R R Rivera, who's out there. So maybe um, I could see him, maybe like Isak Cruz. I mean, it's gonna yeah, be fight, that that but might he's like be this. That I think that might be the move because the the fighters that are are, are ahead of him are William Z Zapata, um, Vasil Lomachenko, um, Tank Davis, Shakur Stevenson, and and Devin Haney. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of those guys are not an option. And you know, Isaac Cruz's dad will say uh, that Frank Martin's a boring fighter. Is what the what is what is what that and they they don't, they don't want they want they want that rematch with Tank. They want that rematch with Tank, and I think Tank haven't had to sit down for the last forty five days, which doesn't amount to much in terms. That's that's you know I I, I don't know how, what that's going to amount to, how that's going to affect him. 
I don't think it will at all. I think that Tank Davis and his people will be happy to give to do the Isaac Cruz rematch while the rest of the division um, works itself out. And you'll probably see Frank Martin, Edwin De Los Santos uh, next is what uh, is what you will probably what you'll probably see. Sorry, Dave, you didn't have a chance to weigh in. Well, yeah, man, I, I think so going. So let me kind of weigh in on just two real quick. So going back to uh, going back to Cruz first and foremost, man, if I can, you know, uh, yeah, I know this guy has the ability to fast track, you know, but I just kind of want to point out ain't really no need to because I would definitely still like to see him, him, him develop. But, you know, you had mentioned Cambosa and then I think Cambosa got a fight coming up against this cat Hughes or something. Yeah, that's next this this weekend actually. Oh, this weekend? That is that's Cambosos, Maxi Hughes's this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. So stand so, by, stand by for confirmation. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, Saturday, July twenty so, second. George Cambosos, Maxi Hughes on ESPN. So that's a that's I'm gonna that watch affects, that. That affects Andy Cruz. So that tells me that George yeah. Cambosos is aligned with top rank and not with Matchroom. Right. Wow. So. So, yeah, man, so I would just definitely say that. I, I think, you know, Frank Martin, man, what? Shoot, man. Um, and he's what y'all said he was, he was 18 and 0, right? Who was 18 and 0? Frank Martin, right? Make yeah, Frank, Frank, Martin. Frank Martin's uh, 18 and 0. Yeah. Well, so, so, look, man, I don't know who he's behind. I mean, I mean, he can't be, I mean, if anybody got the rankings up, he can't be too far behind. Let's say Shakur is up next for title fight or whatever. I mean, this guy is eventually going, going, going. He got to be close in line to get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, to get a shot. Uh, yeah, but you know, politics being what they are. Yeah, right. Shakur, Shakur is ranked second in the WBC. Frank Sh Martin is ranked fifth in the WBC. Frank Martin is ranked second in the WBA behind William Cepeda. Shakur is ranked fourth in the WBA. Uh, Frank Martin is ranked sixth in the IBF. Shakur Stevenson is ranked fourth. Shakur so he, Stevenson yeah, is ranking first in the WBO. And Frank Martin, I do not believe, is ranked in the WBO. Wow. No, he is seventh. He's seventh. Frank Martin is ranked seventh in the WBO. I about to say, yeah, that's just... So if, if possible... If possible, anybody that's close behind Shakur in, in the division, that's what I would be trying to do. If politics and promotions and who you own, that's that's what I would be trying to do. I would be trying to get anybody that's as close behind Shakur as I can get to try to secure me, trying to get trying to be next if if Haney's secure whatever happens that's what i would be trying to do so it's isaac cruz isaac cruz is literally ranked behind shakur stevenson in every in every sanctioning body could i be trying to get with, it bro with the exception of the wbo where shakur stevenson is ranked first and isaac cruz is ranked fifth what's yeah. the likelihood of all that much much higher uh than him fighting them other guys like Loma's out of the question. Yeah, man. That, um, that, that's 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 why I would go, man. That's why I would yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be. And I was going to take some convincing, but get Isaac Cruz in there with Frank Martin. That's not a fight that they're going to want to take, especially if uh, if Tank is calling. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if Tank picks up the phone, then that's not happening. Yeah, uh, but. Um, it's possible they're both they're both top ranked fighters. Um, PBC. I mean, yes, can be PBC fighters. Um, so, but all right. So we'll, we'll go ahead and um, you know wrap this segment up. Uh, make sure that you do like and subscribe um, as we you know we've got our pundit picks coming up shortly for the um, um, the. In a way, Fulton. In a way, Fulton fight. Excuse me, I had a, had a little brain freeze. Um, with that said, we're going to end this and jump into our next segment shortly.